but most of the plants removed two or three out of the five, but only a handful removed all five. So I'm gonna give you the best ones, and then maybe like a one or, one or two runners up that missed it just by one. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So glad to have you here today on episode 2680 of the Cabral Concept Podcast. Today is an updated show. So believe it or not, I've done two previous shows over the past, well today's episode 2680 of the Cabral Concept. We did a show way back, February 23rd, 2017, episode 385, the three best air filters. We just touched on it then, just touched on some of the best plants to keep in your home. But then we did a full episode on the NASA study on air pollutants and how to remove them naturally in episode 1322. That was September 19th, way back in 2019. So now that it's been, what, another five years or so, four years or so, what I want to do is I want to give you updates on that particular study that doesn't necessarily negate them, but to give you the absolute best ones out of like the 20 that were individually rated uh, that you should use, who should use them, and then also, is it enough? Like, is it enough to be able to purify the home? Because I know many of us, I'm definitely within that camp whenever possible, we want to use things as close to nature. Hey, so if we can use a plant, bring it into our home, and that can help us from being exposed to volatile organic compounds, benzenes, and all these pollutants, basically man-made chemicals that are off-gassing from things like the chair that I'm sitting in right now, uh, a desk that I'm working at, floors, paint, you name it, well, that would be fantastic to have. And I actually have an air quality monitor that I've shared with you. I'm telling you right now, it is a game changer too. So um, I've done a bunch of shows. Every single Friday, I do a product review show of my favorite things. And uh, all of those products are listed at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Only the best ones are uh, listed and updated. I removed the previous air quality control monitor. The updated one is there. I've already done a show on that. It's so much better. And it's $100 less. Like it's a much better value as well. What I wanted to do today, though, I'm not going to go through all 20 plants that NASA went through. I'm actually going to go through just the top ones that I recommend uh, based on the scientific research. Now, of course, if you enjoy a plant, if you love plants, you can see plants all behind me in my office. Great. Pick any plants that you like, but at least have a few that have been proven to help with air quality. All right, so let's dive into the study right now. Uh, it is called the NASA Clean Air Study. It was a project led by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in association with the Associated Landscape Contractors of America. Its job was to research ways to clean the air in sealed environments such as space stations. The job was to look at removing carbon dioxide that we all breathe off, right? Uh, and also releasing oxygen through photosynthesis. Um, a lot of the common plants that were studied were proven to provide a natural way of removing volatile organic pollutants such as benzene, formaldehyde, uh, trichloroethylene, and, and many others were tested. So I'm going to go through some of those right now. I'm going to give you the top unbiased recommendations. I don't have a favorite plant, but if you do, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, keep lots of them in your home, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you the shortcomings at the very end of this, and there were a few. That's been kind of proven now, but that does not negate the validity of this. And then I'm going to link up the actual graphs so you can see what the plants that I didn't name, and I'll also link up my previous podcast again, which was episode uh, 1322 that went through all of the plants, the full, the full study. Okay, so giving you the very best of the best, these are the ones that filtered benzenes, formaldehyde, the, trichloro, the trichloroethylene, the xylenes, the toluene, and the ammonia. So they were the only plants to actually remove one, two, three, four, five, to remove all five, okay? So that's a big deal because all, I should say, not all, but most of the plants removed two or three out of the five, but only a handful 
removed all five. So I'm going to give you the best ones and then maybe like a one or, one or two runners up that missed it just by one, okay? So top plant, the peace lily. You know what I'll also do? I found a great article. Uh, I forget the name of the website, but I'll link that up as well that actually shows you a photo of the different plants and then they probably give you like an Amazon link to click through as well. You're welcome to do that. Okay, so, and I have my favorite plant websites at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. They'll literally ship it to you because if you go to your local Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or whatever it might be, they may not have these plants, but you can obviously always buy them online. They ship them in a, a box with, believe it or not, like a little stick in there to stand it and it's got a, you know, this way up only. And sometimes you need to repack the dirt a little bit, but I order plants, believe it or not, uh, through the mail as well sometimes. Okay. So number one on the list was Peace Lily, all five. It, I believe it was number one, all right? So Peace Lily, number one. Then after that was Parlor Palms, okay? So Parlor Palm, it looks like a low-growing, uh, almost like a fern, but it is a palm itself. If we were looking at the Peace Lily, that is what you would typically look think of, like a, a lily, right? So it's a green leaf plant with a white flower and a yellow, um, basically, uh, inside sticking out. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not, as you can see, I'm not a horticulturist um, and, or, or someone that actually studies this in depth. I look at the actual science on health and, and how that helps. Then we've got the lady palm. This one grows up a little bit uh, higher with individual palm leaves, not like a palm branch that you would typically see. All right, so we've got the peace lily, the parlor palm, the lady palm, and then we have the chrysanthemum. Probably already familiar with the chrysanthemum-based plant. Very common, very popular. This is one that is not going to last, though, as long, typically, as the three that I just mentioned. So big fan of chrysanthemums in our house. We definitely plant them. Uh, they're they're going to take just a little bit more care to care for, but well worth it as well. Also known as a florist daisy or a hardy garden mum. You may know it by that name. All right, so those are your top four. Those are the only four that passed across the board for top ratings. So it looks like it was the uh, Peace Lily that was number one, and then number two would be the chrysanthemum. All right, so runners up, just to see if you might have these in your house. I'm only just going to give you a couple runners up. They were the, got it right here, snake plant. So hard to see, but like if you're watching this on video, right over my shoulder right there, that's a snake plant. Uh, those I love having in my office, and we love having them around my house. Why? They're so easy to care for like super easy to care for. You barely need to water them. Honestly, you water them once every two weeks and they're good to go. One of the biggest things that I found with plants in general, you don't want to overwater them. I was always like, well, if I give them more water, they'll appreciate that, right? No, it's based on how much sunlight they're getting, direct sunlight, how dry the soil is getting. But these types of plants are pretty hardy. And so like the snake plant right there, uh, once every two weeks. That's all that I water it at, at the most. If it's really warm in here, you know, it get, gets a lot more sun, which I keep that pretty regulated, maybe once a week, but that that's maximum uh, for sure. All right, so we've got that, the bamboo palm. That's a great one, super cheap, very inexpensive. And it was, honestly, it was right there. It's one of the top plants that you can get. Bamboo palms, they look great. They're fantastic and they're super sustainable as well. So I definitely recommend that. The flamingo lily, so lilies in general are, you know, pretty good plants in terms of uh, not one of my favorites, not one of my top ones. We don't do a lot of lilies because of the scent that they have as well in our house. Uh, but just letting you know, of course, from an unbiased perspective, it's a great one. The last one I want to mention is English ivy. All right, so English ivy can actually be a great plant to keep in your house. You would put it up on a shelf like there is right behind me, there's no English ivy that I'm pointing to, but then the ivy would then hang down. So it's a really beautiful, nice hanging plant. And so I definitely recommend you can bring some English ivy into the house as well. All right, so those are the top plants. Again, I will link them up, stephencabral.com slash 2680, the top air purifying plants. These are really the only ones that I'd say, you know, go out and purchase. They're not expensive. And for the most part, 
again, that snake plant, the bamboo, the palms, they're going to last you years. They really are. It, it, even someone who's not uh, a big botanist, I think I meant to say the word botanist previous, that uh, I can still care for these plants. They're easy to take care of. Honestly, a little bit of water, all the carbon dioxide that I give off all day teaching and talking, uh, for sure, they're getting plenty of fuel for themselves. So now, what was the drawback of this NASA study? Well, it wasn't that the plants don't work. They do. The difference they found was this, is that space stations and like, let's say, like even hospital rooms, places like that, where they're sealed, you don't get the air turnover exchange. That is when they're most beneficial. They're beneficial for everyone. Like, that's why I don't want to get down on this. And I want to say, don't get your plants. They're important. I believe, I mean, I really do. I mean, they are important to keep in your house for purity, for even if it's just carbon dioxide. But again, these volatile organic compounds. Who is it absolute best for? Who is it not maybe as validated for? All right. So best for people that live in condo buildings, high-rise apartments where they don't open their windows. You know, it's much better for those people. They're not getting the same air turnover. Is there a return air duct? Sure. Do you have to keep your vents on auto? Yes. Like, do you need constant flow of AC, all those things? Yes. But the more people you have in your home and the smaller your condo, the more CO2, VOCs, et cetera, are being given off. So I definitely recommend, and I actually lived in one of those buildings. It was for a short period of time, but I definitely lived in one of those buildings in Boston up on the 16th floor, uh, right in the back bay of Boston. Beautiful building, loved it. Views over all of Boylston Street, uh, incredible, right? But came at a, came a bit of a cost, in my opinion. No fresh air turnover uh, because you're just not opening your windows in a 16 floor high rise with no deck or anything like that. So, uh, of course, we've always been into plants. We did that back then. Now, who is it not as important for? Well, it's like our play. You know, we probably have the most plants we do in Maine, but in Maine. We're also there for the majority of the time during nicer weather. We keep our windows and doors open. We've got lots of turnover. So the VOCs, you know, the fluoride, the benzenes, any of those things that we tried to, to have in our house in the first place, they would naturally be getting air quality turnover. So there is that fact to it. Again, um, I just think that there's so many benefits beyond even just the air purifying, the bringing in of nature to your home, the calming, the relaxation, uh, the juxtaposition between nature in your home and then the starkness of your walls and modern day based equipment. Maybe there's some help with EMFs and other things like that. I think that really remains to be seen, uh, but that's my recommendation. Now, the final piece is this, whether you have air torn turnover from the opening your doors or not, Everyone does need a good quality air filter. It's one of the big three. You know, you really do. You need a shower filter. You need an air filter. You need a water filter. I'm, I'm just a huge advocate of that. Like the things that you use the most, right? Water that you drink. Uh, and, and I would say, you know, bathe in, shower in. The air that you breathe, super important that you have filters for those things. And so we use plants, but we also do use air filters. I don't want to pretend like we don't also use a good quality air filter that in all truthfulness is much more powerful than plants. It's not supposed to replace plants. It's supposed to be a complement to them. So the big reason is too, is that air filters have a fan and they actually turn over the air. Like that's the big thing is they move the air suck it through a carbon-based filter, a HEPA-based filter. It might have ozone in there. It might have a negative ion generator, et cetera. And what it does then is it spits out purified air. And it can do that depending on the strength of the air filter uh, once an hour to sometimes even every 10 minutes, depending on the size of the room and the strength of the air filter. So again, I don't want to say that I don't use both. I do. I highly recommend both. You can find all of my resources at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. These are things that I use every single day with my family and my practice, and I've been using them now for well over 20 years. So again, stephencabral.com slash resources. And today's show notes, if you want to check out those specific plants, as well as the NASA based study, that is at stephencabral.com slash 2680. Hopefully this was helpful. Do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.